the independent online television Objective TV, founded in May 2010, has broadened its audience in 2012. Now millions of people are watching this TV channel. Being an active defender of civil rights, the Objective TV is always ready to help those whose rights are violated. During 2012, the Objective TV focused on a wide range of topics, including human rights abuses, violation of fundamental freedoms, attacks on journalists, arrested media workers, property rights issues, death of soldiers, violence against women, etc. Two prestigious international events were held in Azerbaijan in 2012, Eurovision Song Contest and 7th Global Internet Governance Forum. The activities of the two human rights and internet freedom campaigns Sync for Democracy and Expression online initiative, which were launched in connection with these influential international events, were broadly covered by the Objective TV reporters. The channel also broadcasted Swedish singer Lauren's Call for Democracy to a wide audience. The success of the Sync for Democracy campaign lies in the fact that after this campaign, a number of prisoners of conscience arrested at the April 2, 2011 opposition protest were granted freedom. March 2 and November 23 of 2012 were the days to commemorate two murdered Azerbaijani journalists, Elmar Husseinov and Rafik Dage, whose killers have not been brought to justice yet. Attacks and harassment of journalists have not ceased during 2012. The trial of Kral newspaper chief at Zeynalı has been ongoing in the Bakugrave Crimes Court for now seven months. The property of the newspaper was confiscated on October 19th for its failure to pay a total of 19,000 minute court-issued fine to presidential administration head Ramiz Mehdiyev, Mass Media State Support Fund Executive Director Vigar Seferli, Azerbaijan Publishing House Director Ahabey Askarov and Singer Nushabay Askarli. Thus, the newspaper had to stop operating on October 21st. Avazinal was arrested following a lawsuit brought by former MP Gular Ahmadova on October 28, 2011. The Anti-Corruption Office launched a criminal case against Zeynal under Article 311.3.3 taking a large bribe and Article 311.3.4 extortion. Later, he was charged under Article 306, contempt of court, and Article 213.1 Tax Evasion. On June 21st, Tolish Sadon newspaper editor in chief Hilal Mehmedev was detained and sentenced to three months of pre trial detention under drug charges. A criminal case was opened against him under Article 234.4.3 Illegal Possession of Drugs on the grounds that he was found to be in possession of 33 grams of heroin. Later, police searched his apartment and allegedly found drugs in a short pocket. On July 3rd, Hilal Mehmedov faced new charges under Articles 274 High Treason and 283.2.2 inciting national, racial, social and religious hatred, hostility and ethnic discrimination. On August 22nd, the Nizami District Court sentenced journalist Faramaz Allah Verdiev to 4.5 years in jail for calling people via Facebook to riot and illegally crossing the state border. On April the 18th, Ayna Zirkolo and IRFS journalist Idrak Abbasov and Musavat newspaper correspondent Gunay Musayeva were brutally beaten by security guards of the state oil company while the journalists were covering housing demolition in Sultaba settlement. Idrak Abbasov suffered serious head injuries and rib fractures. In March of 2012, Dirty blackmail and smear campaign was launched against investigative journalist and Radio Liberty correspondent Khadija Ismailova. After Ismailova had refused to yield to the demands for her to stop her investigations into the illegal business affairs of the ruling family, an intimate video of her was disseminated on the internet. On June the 12th, IDF's correspondent Mehman Senov was summoned to Sabah District Police Office, where he was questioned for three hours and then detained as the suspect. On June 13, he was accused of hooliganism for allegedly attacking and insulting a police officer at an opposition protest and taken to Sabah District Court. The court did not sentence Hussainov to pre-trial detention. However, the investigator required him to provide a written commitment not to leave the city during the investigation period. 
the criminal case against him is still open. 2012 was an unsuccessful year for print media as well. A large number of newspaper kiosks belonging to Gazette Press Distribution Company were dismantled and the company became indebted to newspapers. Gazette fails to pay its debts, which creates additional financial strains for newspapers. As a result, a group of Yenim Savat and Azalik newspaper correspondents held a protest in front of Gazette's office on December 28. Besides, Azadlik newspaper faced a risk of closure in 2012. Courts imposed a total of 65,000 men fine on the newspaper based on a series of defamation lawsuits filed by government officials and pro-government business owners such as Baku Subway Director Dagi Ahmedov, MP Novozela Aslanov, son of Transport Minister Anar Mehmedov and owner of Bina Shopping Center Kabira Mehmedova. The bank account of Azadlik was frozen as it failed to pay the court ordered fine to Anar Mehmedov. Yenim Savat was also sentenced to a huge fine amounting to 55,000 manat. 2012 was marked with arrest of human rights defenders as well. Following Yudad Iskandali, who is the first imprisoned human rights defender in Azerbaijan, two more human rights actors were jailed. Tayyip Hasan Mehmedov and Yilham Emraslanov were sentenced to four and two years in jail respectively. The trial of another human rights activist Bahtiyar Mehmedov has not been completed after several months. Although Kyrgyz civil society activist of Daigul Aliyev, who was arrested after actively defending flood victims' rights, was granted a conditional release, criminal charges filed against him have not been dropped. Human rights defenders Vidade Iskandar and Talih Hasmemedov, Sahar TV correspondent Anar Bayramli and Khral newspaper correspondent Aydan Janiev were pardoned under a decree signed by the President on December 26 on the occasion of the Day of Solidarity of Azerbaijanis and New Year. However, eight journalists still remain in prison. Lots of protests and rallies were organized by the opposition during 2012. The first major public protest broke out on March the 1st in Guba City. More than a thousand people protested against the city mayor Rafa Bibov after a video footage was disseminated via social networks where the mayor insulted Cuba residents. An objective TV video reporter was seriously injured during the protest. Two journalists of Hayal TV, Vigar Gonagov and Zarguliev, were arrested for organizing the protest by uploading the video on the internet. Their trial is still ongoing. A series of protests were organized by the Public Chamber Opposition Coalition ahead of the Eurovision Song Contest, which served to bring the local human rights issues to the attention of the journalists that came to Azerbaijan for Eurovision. Police behaved aggressively towards the youth. At an authorized rally of youth held in March the 17th, police officers brutally treated rapper Jamal Ali, guitarist Mati Kamilov and blogger Etbar Salmanli. After being detained for 10 days following the demonstration, Jamal Ali abandoned Azerbaijan. On December 19th, young activists of Masavat Padi Yagoblu were sentenced to 2.5 years in jail in connection with a road accident. However, it is widely believed that Yagoblu was arrested for her political activity. 
During the May 21st protests of the opposition in Baku, objective TV photographer and reporter were attacked by police who damaged their video and still cameras. A foreign journalist who came to Azerbaijan to cover Eurovision was also subject to physical pressure during this protest. A video recording of this particular attack was disseminated through social networks. Other silent protests and even processions and marches were similarly dispersed by the police. In September of 2012, former rector of Azerbaijan International University Ashad Abdullayev, who is now residing in France, posted a scandalous video on YouTube revealing his secret bribe deal with former MP Gilera Ahmedova over a seat in the parliament. After the dissemination of this video, the opposition held a protest demanding the dismissal of the parliament. Gilera Ahmedova was eventually deprived of her parliamentary mandate and new Azerbaijan party membership. Objective TV interviewed Ershad Abdul live over Skype to get comments relating to the recent developments. Another remarkable protest was held by religious followers against hijab ban and pressure on Islamists. At the beginning of 2012, taxi drivers protested against the prohibitions and restrictions introduced by the Minister of Transport. Property rights were blatantly violated during 2012 in Azerbaijan. Conflicts broke out between citizens and Baku executive power employees during the housing demolitions carried out near Hedaraya Palace, Flag Square and Crystal Hall. The house of Shirin Bajirazaeva, who was especially outspoken at the protests, was raised to the ground a day after an opposition protest where she voiced strong criticisms. The family of Rezaeva did not receive any compensation. Moreover, her son Elgar Zayev was jailed for two years for drug possession. Defrauded clients of construction companies such as Gen and Kamran LLC held a range of press conferences and protests throughout 2012, which yielded no positive results. Other topics of great concern included problems in the military, such as indifference towards sick soldiers, conscription and enrollment of youth with physical problems and death of soldiers. According to statistics of 2012, the number of killed and injured servicemen in security and defense sectors amounts to 95. Parents accuse the defense ministry and the government of the death of their sons and even removal of their internal organs. The two programs of the Objective TV, namely Difficult Question and What Do People Say, continue to draw in viewers. The Objective TV produced two new programs for youth, Youth and Democracy and Transparency. Presently, the website and YouTube channel of the Objective TV contain more than 6,500 video news.